Welcome back to ASWE TV, your daily dive into the greatest minds, universities, and innovations in engineering. Today, we'll be zooming in to look at the individuals in engineering. The field of engineering is calling for improvements in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and ASWE is answering that call. We'll also sit down with those behind the impact ASWE is striving for and speak with students who share that same goal. Times are changing and the ASWE is changing with them. Last year's ASWE president will take us through the adaptive, inclusive, and innovative goals ASWE has adopted. Goals that will provide a more equitable, diverse, and innovative field of engineering. We'll get a taste of this innovation as we check out our developments in neural diversity, micro nanotechnology, and methods of engineering education. I'm your host, Iris Perez, and you're watching ASWE TV. ASWE TV is your source for everything engineering education. Be sure to catch ASWE TV on TVs at the Minneapolis Convention Center, in select hotels, and of course, you can always find us online at the ASWE website, YouTube, and Twitter. We'll first take a trip to Abu Dhabi, to Khalifa University, where their world-class faculty and state-of-the-art research facilities have deemed it one of the top-ranked universities in the UAE. Research development is at the core of the dream of the UAE. We have brought in faculty from all around the world to guide our PhD students. Khalifa University gave me hands-on experience to work on actual satellite missions that were launched into space. I'm working on covalent organic frameworks which could be used as adsorbents uh, for water treatment. We are working in a cutting-edge technology related to cloud computing. The professors are easily accessible. This has allowed me to attain publishing my work in prestigious journals. Our technology transfer office will help you to commercialize your research findings. I was able to develop a motion assessment tool that's currently being tested at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Just during the first few months that I was here, I met people from about 20 or 30 countries. Halifa University is providing a very attractive scholarship covering the full tuition fee, the full accommodation, uh, travel allowances, your health insurance. State of the art research labs, great mentorship, a safe environment. To me, Khalifa University in the United Arab Emirates provided the full package. Back in Minneapolis, I'm here with Jeremy London, the chair of ASWE's Commission on Diversity, Equity and Inclusion to talk about racial equity in engineering education. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us today. So glad to be here. So to start, walk us through your title and how you're involved at ASWE. Sure. Um, so I am an associate professor of engineering education in the Department of Engineering Education at Virginia Tech. And within ASWE, I am the chair of CDEI. CDEI stands for the Commission for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And one of the ways in which I think about the commission versus a division is that divisions bring people together, commissions bring divisions together. So they are issues that do not affect a particular division, like diversity, mm -hmm. um, but something that brings together all of its members. So what is ASWE doing to promote racial equity in engineering education? Yeah, so one of the most recent initiatives of ASWE was championed by CDEI over the last year, specifically the Year of Impact on Racial Equity. And that was a three-pronged initiative that took place over the last year. At this conference, we're celebrating all of the highlights of that. So there was a, um, this desire to start to engage stakeholders that we don't normally talk to when we think about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And what I mean by that is oftentimes when we think about diversity issues, we go straight to faculty or we go straight to administrators and say, make change happen. And I think that there's a role for that. And one of the three pillars was focused on faculty and administrators. But the other two pillars are focused on students, which is a group of people we don't normally talk to when we think about diversity issues and parents and guardians of K-12 children. And so um, our goal was to try to be more inclusive, even in our approach to wrestling with racial equity issues within ASWE. It sounds like it's it qualifies as one of ASWE's successes. Yeah. So tell me about what successes has ASWE seen in their racial equity efforts in sure. that context. Yeah, sure. So in the K-12 pillar, <clears throat> there was this 
interest on trying to figure out how do we raise awareness about the variety of things that ASWE members are already doing in terms of engineering outreach. Because year after year, like people are putting on programs and they're inviting speakers, they're doing kinds of, all kinds of stuff. Yet we don't see the participation of black and brown children at the same levels as majority students. And so their focus was on raising awareness of existing outreach efforts. And so what they did was two cool things. One, they created an interactive map. Um, and on the map is to show parents and guardians where there's an outreach effort near me. And it was populated by ASWE members and we're still accepting submissions. Um, but so that people can begin to see that there's all kinds of stuff going on around me. So the goal wasn't to create new outreach efforts, but to raise awareness of existing ones and to put it on a map. But then the second thing was to start to hear what is it like to be a student, an engineering student, like from the voices of students. And so they created a series of videos and a social media campaign so that engineering students could talk about like, what's it like to live in a dorm? And what's it like to take engineering classes? But not from like some stale professor. Like they could hear from like actual students that look like them about like what it's like. And so that was the really cool highlights, like the interactive map and the social media campaign organized around these student-led videos was like the successes of that particular pillar. Do you see any hardships continuing that you're working on currently addressing right now? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like that's a long-term yeah, goal yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're talking about white supremacy that's baked into the engineering culture. I know, that's right. So what I think I'm most inspired by and I think about like in terms of what hardships are we continuing to address is one, the naming of this initiative was intentional. So a few years ago, ASWE had a year of action on diversity. But this year was the year of impact. And we were trying to make sure that we do things that have really concrete, tangible outcomes, things that are observable. And so like the notion of realizing that black and brown children don't participate in engineering outreach efforts, which is usually the context in which you can even develop confidence in engineering, interest in engineering, awareness of career paths, like that all kinds of stuff happens if you just get there. Mm -hmm. Like that's still a hindrance. And so like realizing that the interactive map will keep going and there's conversations about how this could be picked up by ASWE as one of its signatures um, such that it could become automatic. Sometimes students make decisions about whether I'm fit or not based on things that happen between interactions with their peers. And so I was moved by the fact that um, so like some of the student team said this challenge helped us to have conversations that we didn't want to have or that we've kind of been deferring. So even like students starting to realize that we can talk about diversity, equity and inclusion and in our little sphere, like our local chapter, like how can we make change happen? Jeremy, thank you so much for your time. It's evident from our conversation that in order to spark change in engineering, we must look at the challenges in the individual. Now let's head to Michigan State University Colleges of Engineering and Education, where quantitative and qualitative approaches are used in the understanding of diversity in engineering students. Student success begins with understanding that every student arrives at MSU with different academic and personal history. The work we're doing would not be possible without the benefit of experts from the College of Education in understanding student motivation, and without experts from the College of Engineering who understand the unique characteristics of an engineering undergraduate experience. One of the things that makes our collaboration so special is that we're able to bring unique viewpoints. So I'm really excited about where this work is going between the College of Engineering and the College of Education. We are in a unique position to look at how we can support engineering students' persistence by taking the research we've done so far and better understanding what works in terms of supporting students' motivation and how we can enact that. And we're excited about the opportunities our work will provide to make engineering degrees a reality for more students each and every year. Michigan is truly making a difference in the lives of its students, just as ASWE is making a difference in the lives of its educators, a difference of truly great importance. I believe it's really important because as educators, we are directly influencing and bringing up the next generation of engineers. And I honestly believe that it's our responsibility to ensure that um, they're prepared, whether they're going out into industry or academia, 
um, just to understand the full responsibility and power that comes with being an engineer um, and how to use it for positive change. It's also a place where you connect with people, you socially interact, uh, which I think it's, it's very important. So excellent in research, the integration you find, the friendship you connect with, all makes ASC very good. It certainly gives me opportunity to meet new, uh, meet a new engineers and also uh, observe how they think out of outside of the box. I'm really enjoying uh, the meeting people who has a passion to encourage our next generation, especially in engineering education. It brings community connections, collaborations, and you get to learn from other people's works, which actually triggers things in you that you're like, I can do something here, collaborate with people, and I think it makes us all better. There are so many grand challenges we're trying to solve today um, in order to really inspire the change makers, the engineers. I think that this conference allows us to come together and figure out the best practices so that we can make a better future. A lot of sessions that I like to attend to be able to get a lot of information, gleam a, new, a lot of new knowledge and take it back to my institution so that we can try to implement some of the best practices that we learned here. Welcome to ASWE TV. <laughs> Welcome to ASWE TV. Welcome to ASWE TV. Welcome to ASWE TV. Welcome to ASWE TV. Welcome ASWE TV. I'm joined now by Adrian Minerick in order to discuss the purpose of engineering and the values associated. Adrian, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Cyrus. Thanks for having me. So please explain your role and how you're involved at ASWE. I'm currently serving as the president of ASCE. Um, that is a three-year cycle. So you spend a year as president-elect, a year as president, and then a year as past president. And I'm nearing the end of that middle. So can you tell us in your own words what you would say the core mission of engineering is? Engineering overall, the core mission is to solve problems. We do that in a variety of ways. Uh, there's a design process, uh, depending on the field of engineering, the subdiscipline, it's approached in a very different manner. But in reality, we are the ones that take fundamental scientific knowledge and apply it into the world to be able to solve problems. Here in the United States, our culture is really derived from a military-like style is one that has approached engineering in a very linear fashion. And the process is to figure out how to disregard information to be able to get to a well-defined problem that can be solved. And our world is so complex now that we need to rethink that culture of disregarding information and instead work to include information include people and include voices who understand those many other dimensions so that our engineered solutions are much more robust. Well, we know that culture is something that we start ingraining in our lives very, very young. So would you say that the practices and skills that we develop in our students place greater importance on some information and maybe lesser on others? Absolutely. There is a hierarchy of what is real engineering, we tend to value um, those items that can be described with mathematical equations. So if there's a system of differential equations and the person who has the skills to be able to solve that, we tend to regard those fields that work more highly. Uh, they're paid more, they're treated you know, as elite in many regards. But those other fields that take into account the social dynamics, the impact on nature, the environmental, that side of things, or the communication, those sometimes even get termed um, in a way that diminishes the value and importance of it. But anything we engineer, that value depends on its context. And if we don't fit the context right, then we end up with a, a very poorly developed product. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of context, we're talking about a lot of changing forces and that are influencing our world and our society. So should we revisit these practices and skills with valuing and utilizing information in the engineering context? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. In doing that, what we'll also do is find that our people who are willing to engage in those conversations with us are going to offer broader and broader perspectives and we will be positioned to get to solutions that are much more robust and last for longer. An example of this is the internal combustion engine and the progress that that enabled was huge. There was little or no attention paid to the gaseous byproducts from that. They seemed negligible at the time. And as the number of vehicles have increased in our world, and we now have jets and et cetera, that are all functioning on combustion principles, those gases are now impacting global climate and um, weather patterns. And so uh, it becomes important to be able to focus in, not neglect information, pay attention to it, listen to all of the people that do see that and do uh, note the ripple effects of, of other systems that it, it impacts. Adrian, that was a wonderful new perspective on engineering. Thank you for your time today. Now let's head to the Micro Nano Technology Education Center where what it means to be an engineer has a different answer every day. Nanotechnology is the science and engineering of very small materials, but the potentials are enormous. There's a huge need for technicians in micro nanotechnologies. We need 100,000 technicians in some type of micro nanotechnology field in the next 10 years. And how do we fill all those positions? The Micro Nanotechnology Education Center is a, it's a grant that we have from the National Science Foundation Advanced Technological Education Program. And the MinTech is aimed at supporting community college technical education programs in the micro and nanotechnologies. Like how can we get more technicians from community colleges graduating and placing them directly into industry jobs as opposed to transferring to four-year colleges. There's so many different things that you can do with nanotechnology that you just wouldn't think of. It's just an absolutely fascinating field. The American Society of Engineering Education starts with its educators but sees its effects in its students. The 90-Day Equity Challenge was designed to give students an opportunity to make an impact in the diversity and inclusion of their area of study. Let's see what takeaways came from the winners. So the 90-Day Challenge is a challenge presented by ASEE, which kind of wanted us to implement diversity and equity um, incentives, but not only to just make them consistent within the 90 days, but create a pattern and a format so that you can continue your diversity and equity platform throughout the rest of your university for future years. We basically had 90 days to come up with an initiative for our design team, something that would further EDI on our design team and bring that further into the engineering space. For my project um, at my school and organization for the National Society of Black Engineers chapter, what we found was that our membership rates were severely low since we were at a considerably small institution where there was only a small number of black students at the school, especially in engineering. So we looked at the uh, data, then we set forth plan in order to find ways to increase recruitment and then also retention as well. So for us, we specifically focused on our member retention and uh, membership. We did an overhaul and an overview of our team structure. And what we ended up doing was summarizing all of this with visualizations. And then after that, we looked at um, sort of what our recruitment process looked like currently. And then our goal was to add EDI. So that ended up meaning that we would do blind recruitment and try and make sure that moving forward, we're not introducing any bias so that we can maximize the amount of diversity on our team. So our project was to focus on an underrepresented community in Utah, and we were able to look for places in Salt Lake City, all around Utah, and we found a community that is called the Diné Nation, also popularly known as Navajo Nation in Utah. And so we were able to create four workshops that were culturally integrated in STEM with their community. And so just an example is 
we had an environmental engineering workshop and we talked about the 400 plus uranium mines that are abandoned in their community and how that's contaminating their water resources. And so really just educating them on this topic in their own community and then how if they pursue engineering education, they can change the future and innovate that so that they can see themselves in engineering also helping their own community. I think it's been a really great opportunity to be here. I love the fact that I'm in this space, being able to really expand and kind of just see new ideas from other people. I know I can go back to my chapter and be able to show different chapters because a lot of Nesby chapters are struggling with the same thing and I'll be able to share how I use the engineering design process to implement this process in order to increase recruitment. I think there's a huge impact with ASEE. I think they're looking to understand different cultures and lifestyles all around the nation um, that come into America and really understanding that each of those have different backgrounds and that means that we need different engineering education initiatives to really seek out each of these backgrounds or we're not equitable in our engineering education. So really just learning from all these different communities and backgrounds and lifestyles of where they come from, um, I think is one of the biggest impacts of ASWE and I think they're willing to learn and that's why we're here, is to learn from each other and understand what's going on in those communities. While our collegiate students may be further along in their studies, ASWE looks to improve engineering education in students of all ages. The International Town Hall will hold discussions on what the engineer will look like in 2030, engineering for a more just world, mentorship in engineering education, and preparation of stewards of the profession. Let's take a look at the kids who inspired these conversations. Oh, I'm not my parents or grandparents, but I have friends both in real life and all over the world. We are all facing a lot of problems. I really want to fix these problems. And I'm told engineers do that. So far, schools hasn't helped me do much except take tests. I'm, for, I'm waiting for the time when you start to teach me to improve my world. Do you hear about the town hall? No, tell me about it. Yeah, they're going to talk about engineering and social justice. What are you talking about? Google it. Justice helps us figure out what is fair, what is right, what is wrong. When justice is working, everyone feels like they are treated fair. What do engineers have to do with that? I don't know. Let's go to the town hall to find out. Cool, let's go. I shall large influence on a student's engineering academic career. Engineering educators may serve and facilitate roles such as mentor, instructor, and coach. In this roundtable discussion, members are welcome to discuss how each of these facets correlate impacting and developing the engineers of the 2030s. The engineers of the 2030s must be actively aware with the goal to support justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion while understanding and mitigating any side effects. They must also be invited to the table as decisions are being made. How can engineers use their privilege to intervene toward a more equitable world? What is the engineer's responsibility in showing up for social justice? Just design and make really cool things. Engineers can improve the environment and the world that we live in. Just make sure everyone feels included. Engineers of the future care about what is important to others. We want to figure out how to make engineers of the future the best. Join us for an engaging conversation to discuss the actions we need to take to move our institutions and educational systems forward to place engineers in the positions of authority they need to be in order to establish and protect a fair and equitable lifestyle for all. Now let's head to Vanderbilt University's Frist Center for Autism and Innovation, where neurodiversity-inspired science and engineering has led to a brand new perspective. The Frist Center for Autism and Innovation at Vanderbilt's School of Engineering started in about 2017, motivated by the challenge of developing technologies to support autistic adults in their journey toward meaningful employment. My oral motor apraxia means that I can be termed as a minimally speaking autistic. I am utterly grateful I was not born 50 years ago. Where would I be without alternative communication technology? However, technology can be made to be more intuitive and easy to use. 
The future of the Frisch Center for Autism and Innovation really depends on the next generation of engineers and scientists armed with a real understanding of neurodiversity so that those next generation technologies and inventions are more fully informed by that neurodiversity paradigm. That's all for today's show. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, where we'll visit universities driving innovation and greater engineering education. We'll also be sitting down with more ASWE executives, including incoming ASWE president Jenna Carpenter, to illustrate where the future of ASWE and engineering as a whole is headed. I'm Iris Perez, and I'll see you tomorrow on ASWE TV. ASWE TV is your source for everything engineering education. Be sure to catch ASWE TV on TVs at the Minneapolis Convention Center, in select hotels, and of course, you can always find us online at the ASWE website, YouTube, and Twitter.